Welcome back to Rob Liefeld Appreciation Month here on Crypto Comics, all of my crypto nights. And today we are gonna get into Bad Rock and Company. This was a six issue miniseries from Extreme Studios and Image Comics beginning in September of 1994. And it features a massive run-in between Pitt and Bad Rock. I believe this is the first time these two mastodons ever met in the pages of an Image comic. This is drawn by Todd Nock with inks by Dan Pinotion on the cover, Larry Stucker on the interiors. It was written by Keith Giffen, who is uh, probably most famous for Lobo at Image Comics. He was known for drawing Trencher, which we have reviewed before. I actually ripped up Trencher because I, I loathe the art. I, how do I define this better? I appreciate, I appreciate the art in Trencher. It just wasn't for me. It was, uh, it was a feast for the eyes. And, uh, and I always felt that it was just, you know, a guy trying too hard. But, you know, in retrospect, it was a guy doing his own thing for a four-issue comic book. And he definitely did do his own thing. And, and I am still trying to hunt down Trencher issues two and three. I have one and four. I'm having a little trouble locating two and three for a reasonable price. Uh, and I, I have had a request from one of you beautiful, beautiful people in Webtown to review Trencher issue two. I'm looking for it. I apologize that I haven't gotten to it yet. But enough about Trencher. This is Bad Rock and Company, created by Rob Liefeld, written by Keith Giffen, penciled by Todd Nock. Uh, surely by now you must have some idea Patience, dear brother, patience. There are so many. I must admit to feeling quite the child in the candy store. Who did you choose? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you know the rules. Of course, my apologies. Well then, enough dithering about. The choice is made. Shall we now? Don't we always? See, it's these two twins, and they've got this wild scheme cooked up. You'll find out. And as an added bonus, I believe he might be of extraterrestrial origin. An excellent choice. You've certainly outdone yourself this time. An alien. Once again, you make my choice pale by comparison. Nonsense. A marvelous specimen. Oh, you are too kind. The standard base wager. Done. Let the gaming commence. What's going on here? Let's find out. A couple of days and one page later, you told me you were serious about learning to play racquetball. I was, I mean, I am. I uh, just don't know my own strengths all because see, he's a 16 year old boy in a giant rock body. I can't believe this, you are such a jerk. Hey, see he's been hitting the racquetball so hard that it's cracked the concrete. Come on, cut a guy a break. I wasn't trying to be a smart ass. You don't have to try. Slam. <sighs> Never the perfect comeback when you need it. Yo, Rock, that was one pretty steamed lady. Yeah, I'm telling you, if I didn't have bad taste in women, I'd have no taste at all. Mmm, yes. They can be quite perplexing, even at the best of times, wouldn't you agree? Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Aren't you a little overdressed there, pal? <laughs> I suppose you've got a point. Uh, Mr. Rock, if I might impose. Sorry, Ace, no pen, no paper, no water. No, no, no. You misunderstand me, please. Is there some place we might talk in private? Look, no offense, but this is really shaping up to be one of those days, you know? You got a pitch? Run it past my agent, okay? Tisk, so cavalier in attitude. And should I also notify your agent if the child dies? At Keown Middle School. Bring! Uh, Timothy, a uh, young Timothy, a moment if you would. Hey, how did you know my name? Excellent. The proper dose of caution around strangers. Such a smart lad. Yeah, well, my grandpa says, and mindful of his elders, such a civilized young man. Um, did you want something, mister? 
Quite so, young Tim. I'd like you to accompany me. Do you think you can do that? Ah, the young ones. So easy. So impressionable. Meanwhile, at Bad Rock Cafe... <sighs> Yo, Shelly, give me a mirror, would you? A mirror? Yeah, I want to see if I really look that stupid. Mm, then you doubt. Doubt? Come on. Monsters from outer space stalking some kid? Okay, Ace, you've had your little joke. What is it? T-shirts? Underoos? Am I getting warm? Mr. Badrock, if it is concrete proof you require, yet another abandoned warehouse district. A little joke. You do like a good joke, do you not, young Tim? Yeah, like on bloopers and practical jokes, right? Exactly. Who are we playing it on? One bad rock of young blood, unless I am greatly mistaken. Bad rock? All oh, right. He's my favorite. I got all his cartoons on tape. He is so cool. Tape is a VHS tape, v VCR. Does do you kids know what I'm talking about? You know, like imagine, just pretend like he said DVD. <laughs> yes, now you do remember your uh, lines. Yeah, yeah. Do you think you'll give me an autograph? That would be so cool. I suppose, should he survive. Huh? Nothing, nothing. Ah, that must be him now. Are we all ready? Uh-huh, uh-huh. This is so cool. I'm warning you, if you got some kind of presentation set up in there, will you please? The child is within. My brother is watching over him. Though he'd prove scant protection should the creature hunting the child. Right, can we get this over with? Hi, my name's Timmy. I'm your biggest fan. Oh, wow. I can't believe it's really you. Wait till the kids at school find out that... <clears throat> Oh, yeah, and I'm being chased by evil monsters. Aliens? Aliens! Okay, just what the hell are you two guys trying to... Boom! Timmy! Huh? Uh-oh, business is about to pick up. The pages of Bad Rock and Company. Good Lord, they found us. They found... Hey, relax, would you? I've read about this guy. He ain't no... Throom! Whoa! Are you okay? Ah, oh, jeez, Pitt. We was just pulling a little joke. Now I'll never get his autograph. If I might explain... Is there a problem? I should say so. The brute's oral hygiene is deplorable. Now that was damn rude. Here we go. There, now we're even. And here's one to remember me by. Chuck. Oh, wise guy, eh? Thrilling, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. I couldn't help but notice that you seem to be having some difficulty with Bad Rock. Let's be fair, he's hardly as impressionable as the child. Too true. A nudge here, a tweak there. Paranormals can be so vexing. Can't they, though, still in all a splendid job? I must admit to a faint flush of pride. Oh, oh my, didn't that look nasty? My boy can handle it. Care to double the bet? Done! So they're obviously pitting superheroes against each other and then betting on who's going to win. This is There's a movie called Trading Places starring uh, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd that was released in the 80s. Kind of reminds me of uh, the two brothers in that. They make a $1 bet on if a impoverished black man from the streets who they put in charge of their multi-million dollar corporation can run it successfully. One brother, of course, thinks he can. The other brother says there's not a chance. And that's what this kind of reminds me of. Anyway. Oh, Supreme. There he is. Hey, hey, your fly's open. Sucker! Conk! Grrr, slash! Hardball it is. 
Pow! Look at that action! That's fun. Bravo, bravo, a masterful display. I must concur, albeit reluctantly. Huh? You two guys. I don't know what your game is, but I... Scratch! <laughs> uh, come here often? Boom, 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 whatever. Wretch. Just to give it a good wretch. And a smack and a cack. This is crazy. What am I doing here? And why is Pit fighting Bad Rock? Exquisite form. You see, I told you that paranormals would take us to a whole new level. What? I must admit it, it is infinitely more fulfilling than those two mercenaries in, what was the name of that wretched country? Angola. Angola, yes. If I recall, you took me for quite the pretty penny, as I will this time. I beg to differ. Care to put more money where your mouth is? Don't be crude. If I might change the subject, these heroes tend to be an altruistic lot. Can we be certain a death blow will be struck? Oh, ye of so little faith, as if I'd not already figured that in. Should they look to be pulling back, we'll simply crush the child's head with some debris and each blame the other's combatant. Genius, pure genius. Speaking of young Tim, whoop. Ah, oh, there's the lad. Get away from me! Help! Help, Pitt! Help! As if he could possibly hear you, Timothy. Nah, no way! You got voodoo eyes or something. Pitt! Help! Insolent whelp! Slap! That should teach you to mind your manners. Big man hitting a kid. It's like Frankenstein's monster, he just makes noises. Ah, oh, brother dear, that hair trigger temper of yours has done it again. Oh, forgive me if I opt not to witness what promises to be a rather grisly episode. <sighs> and you with the car keys. Victory, it would seem, is mine by default. I five dollars says a man will scream within the next ten seconds. Yeah! Keep your money, my good man. I'd never collect on a sucker bet. Now, which way was that dratted bus depot? Go down about six blocks and hang a left. Oh, I thank you, my good. What am I, the village idiot? Like I'd suddenly forgot there was two of you? Sides, this way there's... Don't even think it. One of you for each of us. You, you, you're going to hurt me now, aren't you? Yep. This guy kind of sounds like Booster Kiwi when he's, when he's begging for mercy from, from Jakob. If you're familiar with uh, independent comics on YouTube, you know, fanspeak, Chester Busby's fanspeak. Kind of reminds me of uh, Booster. He's a little coquettish Kiwi bird. You're going to, to hurt me now? Aren't you? Yep. About 15 hours later, give or take, Technos down at Blood are having a field day with those two. Near as I can tell, they had some kind of low-grade psi talent. At least I think that's what they said. You know how it is with eggheads. No words under eight syllables need apply. Aren't your people worried about getting the evil eye? Nah. They got precautions up the wazoo. Then that's settled. I'm just glad everything worked out all right. This here little scamp means the world to me. Yeah, that's one sharp kid you got there. Even if he does keep some strange company. Well then, we'd best be getting on. Thank you kindly for lunch. Yeah, and thanks for the autographed t-shirt. Oh, no sweat. You take care now. Nice to see you traveling in better circles. Hardy har, you're a riot, Mavis. Speaking of which, my niece is in town for a few days and, well, she's a big fan. No problem. Hey, does she play racquetball? Oh, um, you know, on second thought, what? What is it? 
Hey, what'd I say? Oh, uh, come on, Mavis. And here on the cover of the National Enquirer, co-ed trapped in racquetball hell. Bad Rock goes berserk. I knew what he really wanted, sobs terrified teen. Next issue, Bad Rock versus Fuji. Enough said. Whoa. Okay, this was fun. This was very light, very light comic. Uh, does it reside within Youngblood continuity? Sure, let's say it does. That's great. It's fun. We just have some fun with it, right? This is just for having fun with. Anyway, let's see what Rob has to say about the whole Shapooper. Hiya folks, and welcome to the first issue of the latest edition to Extreme's Corner of the Image Universe, Bad Rock and Company. We hope you enjoyed our first issue and invite you to stick around for the next five. As many series go, this one promises to be a whole barrel of fun and things only get better from here. In the next few issues, you can expect guest appearances by practically everyone in the Image family of books. But our featured guest stars will include Stormwatch's Fuji, Freak Force's Mighty Man, and that fleet-footed Velocity, courtesy of Mark Silvestri's Cyber Force. And in case you had it in your head that all it takes is a great guest star to get things rolling in this title, you'll be pleased to hear that we've also rounded up a group of top-notch writers to make sure that every one of Bad Rock's epic encounters is as memorable as the last. Andy Mangles, who lives here in the Portland area, Tom and Mary Beerbaum, Jim Valentino, and Robert Lauren Fleming will be handling the writing chores on subsequent issues of Bad Rock and Company. So make sure to drop back in each and every month to check out the fruits of these talented folks' labor. Oh, and while we're on the topic of talented people, it might be a good idea to heap a ton or so of praise on the creative team responsible for this issue, namely Keith Giffen, Todd Nock, and Larry Stucker. For those of you not in the know, Keith Giffen has been working in the crazy field of comics for some 20 years now and is the creator of Lobo, Trencher, and Ambush Bug, and was responsible for the successful retooling of DC's Justice League and Legion of Superheroes during the 80s. Keith recently finished writing Topps Comics' Mars Attacks miniseries and is currently busy plotting Freak Force for Eric Larson. Keith's future extreme-related projects include a Dutch story, which he wrote and penciled, appearing in Youngblood Strike File Number 8, and our upcoming Legend of Supreme series, which he'll be co-writing with Robert Lauren Fleming. Penciler Todd Nock first came to our attention through last year's Extreme Talent Search, and since relocating to sunny California as part of Extreme Studios, he's been one of the busiest guys in our stable, knocking out six killer issues of Bad Rock and Company, as well as an issue of Supreme and upcoming issues of Team Youngblood and New Men. Todd's style is full of the same kind of bouncy excitement that's been fueling the work of fan favorites like Art Adams and Joey Mads over the last few years, and anyone in the mood for fun-filled action stories is definitely going to take a liking to the Toddsters' work on this series. In addition to having an unusually spelled first name, Larry Stucker is making his inking debut with this issue of Bad Rock and Company. And following our next issue, which was inked by extreme veterans, Danny Meeky and Marlo Aquiza, will be coming on board as this title's regular inker. A longtime background inker here at Extreme, Larry's work on Todd's pencils represents his first major assignment, and we all feel he came through the job with flying colors. Rounding out the group of talented people involved in this title are Byron Talman, Kurt Hathaway, and the awesome men and women at Extreme Color, who all contributed some of their finest work ever in the areas of coloring, lettering, and color separations, respectively. Take a bow, folks. And that's it for now. We'll be back with more mirth and mayhem next month when Andy Mangles jumps into the writer's seat and Stormwatch's Fuji jumps into the ring as featured guest star. So make sure to drop on by, and in the meantime, drop us a line and let us know what you thought of this issue. We're always eager to field your questions and comments, so get those cards and letters in the mail. As always, thanks for the support. Rob Liefeld. Man, that was fun. It was very light, but it was fun. Ooh, Supreme Madness. Don't know. Because I didn't read much Supreme, but, you know, if you go watch the Supreme review, hopefully uh, some of the Crypto Knights out there have discussed their love of Supreme and the issues you should be looking for in your local comic shop's back issue bins. Oh, hello. Well, Spawn and Chapel. Now that, that is a subject for another video. And that video will be tomorrow, right here on Crypto Comics, as we delve into the history of the relationship between Chapel and Spawn, and Chapel's fate. So, oh, Mortal Kombat! <laughs> anyway, that's it for this review of Bad Rock and Company during Rob Liefeld Appreciation Month here on Crypto Comics. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe and hit that ding dong for notifications. And if you are a true crypto knight, please support 
your main man right here by backing my comic book, Megawatt vs. the Vampires of the Sun on Kickstarter. Just go to megawattcomic.com and check it out. In fact, check it out right here.